so a lot of people are interested in different fields of religion, meaning the scripture, basically, as far as Christians go. But, so they're interested in uh, things like eschatology, the end times, uh, things having to do with uh, the return of Christ, the tribulation, and many other fields, I'm kind of interested more in what happens after that, like the, the starting of the new kingdom, because that's that's really where the new life is, you know, that's where the new things that we have to look forward to start up, because the tribulation and even, you know, a little while after that, it's going to be kind of rough in the earth, you know, it's going to be, it's going to be stormy seas. Because and, you know, a lot of people think that you know only the good people, you know, are going to rise up, and then and then only the bad people will be left in the earth. But actually, uh, the scripture, my reading on it, is that those that will live on in the earth, those that are redeemed, will go through it all. They will see the worst times that ever will be in the earth coming up. So, yeah, it's not something that uh, we've all been looking forward to, but it's what God has planned, and it's, what, it's what's necessary, and we have to go through if we're going to make it. In your patience, you possess your souls, and in also facing great and terrible things. As I was researching for an essay, I was reading in Micah 7.14, because there's some elements about the solitary nature of the elect there. And it's just interesting how it it's going to develop in a situation where the people that are the remnant, the, the especially the remnant, but I think all of God's people scattered throughout all the nations as, as it is written, or my take on it, is that the saved will be called from every language and every race on earth, every nation on earth, will he call them. And uh, those in addition to the saved 144,000 elect Jews, the remnant of the Jews. So just think about that, it's a tiny portion of the Jews, uh, 144,000 will, be, uh, will be saved, it looks like to me. I mean, who knows what it's going to be like, you know, probably I mean, it's, I think, eventually we may even get to the point of higher technology, but there may be a while when it's like kind of rustic little house on the prairie kind of thing, where, you know, it's the back to old basics, farming and cloth on the spindle and, you know, just basic sustenance kind of, of living, but I think it will... Uh, I don't know whether the uh, the ETs will be integrated, start start to be integrated, or what will happen. But I don't think that we can really be too rustic for too long, given the fact. I mean, unless you know, maybe God will cordon off the planet so that you know nothing nothing high tech can get through. Um, if if that's even a thing, we don't know. But I think it's. Um, I think that because life really can't, I mean, unless unless pe all everyone's kind of like uh, Attack on Titan, unless everyone is, their memories are reset and no one knows or believes in technology, which I think happens actually as, as a reality. It, it happens uh, to uh, every generation that, that passes, like when, when uh, Azrael was saying that he you know, has seen seven generations go by, and this is the eighth, but he destroys everything at the end of those generations because um, the, the, new, the new crop of humans in the earth have to, you know, in order for them to, I guess, have the experiences that they need to have, they can't have all this high-tech, like, right out at the onset. They have to develop it. They have to start out struggling against the elements, you know, developing. That's why I think, you know, as I, as I continue to think about World War III and how stupid it is, everybody's in the, in the mood for another war, not realizing how long it's taken for us to get to the point 
or we have nice air conditioning in cars when it's in the 90s outside. So I just think it's a, it's a shame that we're headed in that direction. But I don't I don't know, maybe nukes will come into play, but I I'm kind of thinking that the mass destruction that we might experience doesn't come from nukes. It, it, it may come from other forms, you know, more conventional weaponry, but maybe not from nukes. All right, so I'm uh, going for a walk here, and uh, there's a uh, pond, which now, after these major rains that we've had, should have some water in it. If I can even get down there, I wasn't sure if this path would still be here, but it is. So I have to be careful, there's a there is danger out here in terms of rattlesnakes. And I'm not worried about mountain lions or coyotes, but poisonous bugs and plants and all kinds of stuff. But I really like this sage here. It's uh, very nice. There's lots of bees here. Hopefully I don't get stung walking through here. Well, that sage smells great. So, I saw a couple of things recently that has led me to believe that they really are going to implement that famous thing with the picture of that goofy looking guy with a big smile on his face. You'll own nothing and be happy. So, um, I was just watching this morning on a this one guy, he's pretty good. He's, he uh, shows up on the gray zone uh, as a commentator, also with uh, Max Blumenthal. I forget his name offhand. Anyway, he's got his own show now, Global Something or Other, and he's talking about how BlackRock and all these people meet up for uh, what their what their main thrust is. What they're trying to do is privatize everything, so that you'll have to rent everything from the roads and bridges to all public facilities and it won't be like a public service anymore because the they, they have to find a way he was pointing out that capitalism requires ever more gains for the wealthy and the and the successful in in the capitalist system this guy's a died in the wool socialist but uh and, and not saying that i uh, know if there's a better way or not but he does make some good points. You know, the, the socialists do make good points. They do have a good argument, except that um, overall, I would say that minus, minus a better supreme solution like the Lord, uh, it's the best way. But, um, you know, can, can there be a, a better way to do it that doesn't consolidate wealth in just a few hands and they get more and more greedy and more and more oppressive as the scripture says, talking about America, Babylon the oppressor ceases. Announce in the gates, Babylon the oppressor ceases. Because that's what America is. Babylon. So, um, and then I saw, so it, it basically what's going to happen is that um, as, as more and more power consolidates, you see, I, I do look... You know me, I look at it from the spiritual perspective, but, um, you know, like, it's it's not just, you know, the way society's developing and, you know, oh, it's another cycle of, you know, human greed and develops up to corruption until the fall of, like, the Roman Empire and countless other empires that fall to the human nature of greed and corruption and so forth and loss of moral integrity as power gets too too much for the people bearing it. But uh, it's actually that Satan the devil, it looks to me, is designed to 
create a society that uh, a situation where he can interject his evil and and mayhem so it's not just that man is on his own creating this evil situation that is more and more oppressive more and more problematic more and more miserable for the regular people and then even for the rich too because they're a victim of guilt being locked into it especially like probably like this guy I was watching the CEO of BlackRock these people that are high at the top uh, I I think it's highly likely that what you've got is they are in on on the satanic um, they, they visit the the marine kingdom they sit around the round table in the marine kingdom even though they themselves don't know what Satan's really up to because they're completely anti-religious they don't read the scripture and believe in God the scripture is abhorrent to them and even if they did it's it's not revealed to them because of their wickedness so there's no danger of them finding out what Satan's really up to Ooh, I'm going some major bushwhacking here so what so what happens is they all get led along this guy Larry Fink or whatever these guys these people these all ultra mega rich oligarchs the Jeff Bezos the Bill Gates the World Economic Forum and all all that it's just a a vehicle for the devil to interject his evil and and wreak havoc and but God has ultimately created this situation so that those that will choose good will choose good and those that will choose evil will choose evil and it won't, there won't be any ambiguity ultimately and as the scripture rings in my mind in Revelation that as as the, the tribulation and the final plagues are poured out upon humanity they don't repent like we would think we would think that they would they would be smart enough to realize that God was doing all this and they had better stop their evil but the scripture says no they 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 continue on though at least we know and, and, and not, maybe whether they know or not I don't know but that's why you got to hold on to righteousness and not allow yourself to, because the, the scripture says if the, if the scripture says just do the just do the math or, or the common sense reasoning it's really not really math involved it's just you, if you just add it up that in fact if what you have is a situation um, where the scripture says that a rich man can hardly enter the kingdom of God then that tells us something important it tells us that anything that is done or any any even including inheritance unless you blow it all and and uh, break off all ties from your wealthy family and now you are a poor person absolutely poor and banished by your family but the bottom line to it is that it's anything that creates or maintains wealth is wickedness now this this is so hard to understand because I mean if I had wealth or if I came into wealth or I came you know to, into something that made me wealthy let's just say a large sum of money I'm not gonna purposely blow it all just to be poor but I'm not gonna I'm, I don't want to get involved in investment schemes but I mean I would buy myself a friggin house <laughs> with, with air conditioning so that at least, you know, at least a modest house you know that you could live reasonably well unlike the situation I have now which you know I shouldn't complain because I think it's actually a lot better than what a lot of people have I don't mean to sound like I'm not grateful I am I'm grateful to have both a car and an RV which I've been able to maintain for many years let's see how many years total well I had a truck with a shell for four years and then I had the RV for the remaining so really about 30 years minus the rare and beautiful occasions when I could get indoors ah look at this beautiful shade here after being in that hot sun the sun has finally come out here in uh, Los Angeles been really um, cloudy and overcast and stuff we call it June gloom but uh, the heat is back and creates that problem of I gotta leave my RV early you know lickety split I can't spend too much time there relaxing because uh, it gets super hot 
So we've had so much rain though. I'm wondering if it's because my, my Anna, because remember, I don't know if you guys remember this, you probably don't because unless you keep track of it, it's kind of hard to, to remember it. But um, so when, when my Anna uh, got taken up by the, uh, the, the interest that the palace had in her, so the, the royalty came with a bunch of black SUVs and armed priests and everything. And so they, uh, they came to get her, but when she left, um, and remember she's blind during this whole thing, but when she left, now there in Thailand, it's very, very wet, especially in some seasons. I haven't been there, so I, haven't, I can't really confirm this, but um, it's much more wet. This, this is incredibly dry and, and with very little foliage and trees compared to what Thailand is. This is like a desert, absolutely. Even now, we're all oh, looking at, look at how big this lizard is. I wanna, he, he, he just wants to say hi. Let's see here, see if we can get him. Where is he? I see him. Oh yeah, there he is. That's one of those, um, it's one of these larger ones. What's up, bud? How are you? So, but in any case, um, not to lose the point entirely, so when, when she left the monastery, uh, it just, a deluge came, okay? That's what I'm saying. And, and I don't know how much that had to do with Azrael dwelling in her body or not, because he was, he was dwelling with her the whole time because she had imprisoned him in her body because he transgressed and he helped these these humans in an ancient time, or at least about 3,500 years ago is what I understand. And he had to spend that time in the bottom of the ocean, but then he got out and did something else. I forget what happened. Continual pattern of misbehavior, just like me. And um, Anna, whatever her official name, that's not her, that, that was Anastasia, that was her Russian, little Russian blonde girl name. But uh, she was actually, a, a, you know, a, a considerably powerful angel. Oops, I'm gonna have to cut out here. So every time I see these, uh, these uh, like, side banks here where you see the, the, the earth exposed where who knows maybe it was water runoff or something when water or maybe lava came charging through this area but now I think about the fact that Azrael told me that the earth was made from a human being just like you and me is that just wild And so these could be the, um, these could be the, like, when you see this, this pattern in the rock, like this, this could be like the, the veins or tissue and cells that became rock. That's pretty wild. Well, they probably put up the dam because I don't hear water rushing through here. Even other times I've heard water coming through here. I wonder if they've uh, plugged it up. But there's water in there like a, a lake. Look at all that water, guys. But normally I, th I thought I heard it rushing through here, but maybe it's just, you can see there's some movement See like here, you can see the movement. But uh, everything's a little bit murky compared to places like Colorado. Well, I wish, I would love to uh, be able to hang out in Colorado. So uh, I went there for summer camp one time. Went to Steamboat Springs. There was a summer camp there. And uh, there's so much water, so many lakes and streams because it's a lot more moist up there. Like I said, we live in uh, Los Angeles, Southern California. We live in a bit of a desert here. It's hot and dry for the most part. But uh, maybe my angel helped me out. I got more rain. I love, it'd be so cool, man. You know what would really be wild too is like, if, um, 
And, and actually the scripture says that that's what's going to happen to Israel. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, it says that um, the, uh, the dry land will become pools of, of water and uh, people will look upon it and say this is a goodly land. And I think now it's, it's, you know, it's dry like a desert, you know, and it's war-torn and terrible karma and all that, but according to God's word, eventually it'll be like a paradise that men will come and look upon it and say this is a goodly land. So they wouldn't say that if it was like totally dry and nasty. So we wait here in our various, look at that, that one sycamore tree is still alive there. I'll turn this around so I can zoom in. Wow. But uh, it's hard for trees to survive out here because see, mostly what you get are these oaks that are dr drought, more drought tolerant. I think they tried to plant a lot of these trees, but they die because there's just not enough water and it's very hot. And uh, I think that the, uh, the inspiration behind Dune, the, the, the series by Frank Herbert, if you've read them all, I've read them all, uh, they're really quite, quite excellent. If you're into reading science fiction, it's, you know, if you're interested in that topic, it's really a, um, a cornerstone. But I think it's a vision of the Lord. I think Muad'Dib is, is Jesus. And uh, now I say, well, wh what do you mean? Well, it's not scripture, no. It's not like inspired by, you know, the, the spirit to, um, to be the word of God. But it's, in a way, kind of a, a fictional version of something that, that tells a piece of, of the puzzle, like I think a lot of entertainment is. Star Trek, um, countless shows, I, I believe, are, are visions of various sorts that gives a little, give us a little something. And uh, because uh, Dune, the, the setting for Dune as the name suggests, it's it's set in a in a desert, and um, it's actually really cool. I, I mean, I like that idea, except in uh, in reality, where there's little water, there's little life. Personally, as I've mentioned, I I like a, a forest setting, you know, with lots of cool pools to fish and swim in, and there's a constant source of fresh fish you can fry up after a hard day's walking and hiking and exploring. And it's just kind of cool, but um, there's something to be said for the desert too. You know, it has a, I think in some ways, like maybe it has like this deep spiritual sense to it, you know, that offers something. This is kind of a hybrid, you know, it's a, but mostly desert, I would say, but an arid surrounding nonetheless. And then the other thing that I saw that was fulfilling of the that thing about you'll own nothing and be, and be happy with that goofy guy. You'll own nothing and be happy. Um, the other thing is, is that uh, you probably, a lot of you, I'm sure have seen this, especially if you're uh, into any kind of digital artwork or doing stuff uh, online, that um, big old fire blew up in uh, Adobe's face, which I'm glad. I gotta say I'm glad because uh, the model that they currently have had for a long time now is that you don't own. When you, when you get an Adobe product, you don't own it, you rent it. Now that may seem good to people that are stupid and don't know that you're actually paying more and you're, you're making them richer by paying them a monthly fee rather than a one-time fee, even if it's a lot. And uh, they found this to be a much more profitable uh, way to do it. So, you know, how can you say that it's wrong? Well, what I don't like is, I, I don't like anything like that. Um, and I'm, I'm always gonna look for an alternative. I bought my video editing program outright. My drawing program and everything else is non, um, is, is independent, you know? And uh, the only thing is that uh, I, use, I use an older version of Adobe uh, Photoshop. But, um, so okay, the, 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 what Adobe did, in case you hadn't heard the story, is uh, 
in their somebody finally read the fine print in in one of their latest uh you know how when you um, install software it gives you that big long thing almost no one reads it you just scroll to the end and click okay but somebody actually read it and and they update they had updated terms of service and basically what adobe has said is not only as i just said that that you you have to rent it you don't own it but not only that but now they have access to your files. First of all, you can't use it unless you're uh, unless it um, you're connected to cloud service. Okay, so that means you have to you actually have to have internet connectivity in order to use your bloody product. You can't work offline, or you can, but it's it event, at, at certain stages, like when you as soon as you log into the internet, and and get this, get this. Okay, there's you can you can read it for yourself. There's a lot of people pub publishing it now. And you'll see it online, especially on Twitter, uh, as far as I understand, what people were reporting. That's one, that's one really funny guy. This guy's name is uh, Victor Van Doomcock. <laughs> I forget the name of his channel. Uh, it's uh, uh, DVD Overlord, I think is the name of the channel. But anyway, he, was, he he's the one who broke the story to me. That's how, that's how I found out about it. But Adobe says that they can they can um, modify, delete, or, or whatever your content at their discretion if they feel it violates user policy and not only that but um, they can also display your work so um, they can use and display your work as they see fit so everything that you do on Adobe right now this may sound now as I said it's a barn burner and it may sound completely like how how, how could you lose sense to do something like that because I mean um, there's a, there was a huge rebellion all these people are dumping Adobe now but how they can get away with it is kind of how they've gotten away with it for a long time this whole um, disgusting enslavement rental system that they've got which is that they make for, for instance with Photoshop there's just no other when you when you you have to edit roster images and there's just no other program that compares to Adobe now that this may change um, and there's there's competing products like painter and there's all kinds of various drawing and painting programs now especially for tablets as i was recently looking into it but um in reality still right even to this day there's just nothing like photoshop so you think well how can they get away with this but these, these outrageous things and i was thinking that um rental apartments are the same thing it's like, how could they get away with it? You know, it's, just, it's like a it's total oppression. You should, you should be able to at least own your home after a certain amount of paying into it. But no, if, if after 45 years in the same apartment paying your rent on time and everything, but you run out of money, boom, your ass is out on the street if you can't pay it for, for whatever reason. And, uh, and you don't own anything. You're, you're, you know, you're just, you're just back out on the street. So it's a bad deal. You should always buy if you can possibly do it, like I said. But the reason they can get away with this is because there's no other housing that's affordable. They can't afford a house. They don't have the credit. They don't have the, the means to keep up a mortgage. And, uh, you know, they don't have collateral. They don't have whatever. And so there's, you know, and they don't want to deal with all the property taxes and everything else that they're also make to be oppressive. And so what do you got? Well, what you got is everyone's got no choice. Everyone just gets used to it. And now everyone's a slave to paying rent. I never liked that. That's one reason I live in my bloody RV parked on the street. Something big just flew in those bushes over there. Uh, if this is actually uh, quite a bit of water. This is uh, way more. See, so if, if you could maintain this much water, you could have fish in here, like at least catfish. that kind of dig this murky water here. But uh, we don't, it doesn't last that long. If it rained the way it rained this year, consistently yeah but that's a it's a, that's like a once in a 15 year rain cycle actually the 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 winter before that we also had a lot more rain than usual it has been dry here for a long time but that adobe thing that's like that's that's like a, a pilot excuse me to see how much they can get away with it you know like how much people will accept something like that. But uh, see, I think that um, when people uh, do sin, they, they become weak to things like that. And so what you're gonna have is where you see other people are gonna say, man, this is unbelievable. You know, I don't know why you put up with this. But on the other hand, um, 
people that won't do it. Like, for instance, if, uh, and, and what the uh, evil forces that, that want to enslave humanity will do is they'll, uh, any, any up and coming company that has a competing product, like for instance to Adobe Photoshop, you know, a raster image editor, uh, what can happen is they just go after them and destroy them, either buy them out, and if they can't buy them out, they destroy them. And, um, and so that there's, so there's a one main one, and then um, if you have someone like Bill Gates controlling what all the computers are, are able to run, controls the software, then what they can do is that, um, and they, they're already doing it, uh, they, they already, every time you have to upgrade to get their latest OS, you have to buy it, you have to buy a new computer, a new, new OS, if you don't buy a new computer, or both, and then, um, because uh, then you can't use the, the web. See, all my, my older machines are completely useless, pretty much, in terms of the web, because there's all these, well, I couldn't even, probably I couldn't even check my email, but you know, like images won't show up. So if they control the codex for all of that, then that's how they are able to do it. And, and there's no other option. And, you know, people may piss and moan and make a big hubbub and stink about it, like everybody are doing right now with Adobe. But at the end of the day, the people who comply are gonna be left in society, and the people that are, you know, eventually people will be pressured because they're un, they're unrighteous. They don't know the righteousness of the Lord. They don't have the faith, and they don't, you know, they, they think that well, if I don't join in with the whole program, then I'm out. Basically, you're out of style, baby. You don't have the latest clothes. But you know, then it's a matter of survival too. You can't you can't work. You can't you know be part of the whole economy if you don't agree to this system of having to pay a monthly fee to use everything. You, don't, you own nothing. And see, that's what they call the difference between soft money and hard money, in case you haven't heard that. So hard money is money that comes in if we, as, as an income that comes in on a continual basis, like rent or you know, continual fees for something that you have to use. So uh, that's why cell phones were a great racket for a while, although there's, there's so many companies now in competition and everything that they have a lot more prepaid and stuff like that, so there's options now, one of which I use, um, Ultra, which is a, a subsidiary of T-Mobile, and um, but but it's it's a pay-as-you-go, but they used to rope you in, your minimum for a year, and that really sucked for me because like, I've been, you know, believe it or not, I know it's hard to believe someone could live in California with as expensive as it is, but there have been times way back when, like having to pay 40 bucks, oh man, for the cell phone bill? Don't have it. We barely had enough for food. So, um, and just, just straight up even don't have it. I have $21, you know, just, just, just enough to fish out the last 20 before I'm completely broke. Yeah, so this is a spot I've been coming to for years. Smoked many a fine bowl here. But what's different is I've got cameras and a social media to share it with the world. Wow, there's uh, more water in there than I've ever seen it have. And it's a shady spot with a lakeside view for lunch. Well, if there aren't fish in here, there should be. I don't think there is. Maybe a few little minnows, tadpoles, but no big ass black bass, guys. You guys ever fish for black bass? Oh, I think I see a turtle. Let me see, wait. Hold on, I'm gonna see. That's probably a stick, but let's just see. That's a turtle. Ah, oh, what's up, bud? Boy, you got this place all to yourself. Looks like, for the most part, unless all your pals are hiding. You're the only one with the courage to come out. It could be a, a, an outcast mermaid living in here. I was thinking, you know, if I saw one of those mermaids, instead of running, freaking out, I know what they are. I'll say hello. Sorry, I hope I'm not disturbing your uh, place to hang out here. And we do have minnows here. 
see if we can get them on camera. See them? See those minnows? So you do have fish, so you leave water there long enough. And you'll get fish. Guys, um, just now, right here, a big fish just came up right here. I would say um, probably at least a foot long. Oh, okay, I think he's coming back. Yep, here he is. Big old fish just jumped out of the water. That's what that ripple is right there. Big old fish just jumped out. Total jump out. Kid you not, friends, there's a good sized fish in here. Look, look, there he is. The scripture indicates how the destruction of Babylon means the freedom or the release of the friends of God. So, this place, as I've mentioned, my theory. And it could just be because I'm here, but there's other reasons why I think that Los Angeles might actually be that great city that puts its boot on the neck of all the nations, even though they try to distract you with things like it's New York or Washington, D.C. or something like that. I think it's the head of the serpents right here in Los Angeles. There he is, right there. He's, he's just hanging out on this rock right here. It's like he wants to say, look, 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 look. What is he doing? He's eating moss or something. He wants to say hi, look, he's still there. Look at him, look. Look at how big he is. Look, dude. See, it's really incredible for out here where it's so dry that, uh, the fact that you got a fish that big in this pond, probably somebody, probably somebody put him in there. I don't know if he developed on his own. Maybe. Right where he is, look at, look at how close he is to where I'm sitting right here. That's, that's where that, that rock is. And he's just coming right up like that, dude. <laughs> that's amazing. I, I mean, he's, he, seems like he might be an indigenous type of fish, you know? Because sometimes I've seen those fish, like even in the LA River, you know, which is a big just cement snake, and I've seen some fish that are like six inches long in there when you get water in there. But a lot of times it totally dries out and they must all die. But their, their eggs must remain. And then the next water comes, they get born again. Born again believer. Recently I was watching that movie Ready Player One, and uh, I realize a lot of you might be thinking, and I had this thought too, that it's a plug for Satan's virtual reality hypnosis to suck all sucker souls in. But um, uh, on the other hand, it is um, maybe you know it was somebody genuine making a movie about his passion for video games, you know, which I shared growing up. You know, it's like. I always thought that was one of the coolest things that developed right when I was a kid. You know, the first, you know, home computers started coming out. The Apple, then the Apple II, and the Apple IIe, 
and the Macintosh. It was just so cool, that idea of digital information on a screen and programming and stuff. It just seems so, so appealing, like, you know, some way to get out of the, this um, mundane survival-based farming or hunting, you know, whatever. What's interesting, um, I was thinking about Ready Player One, is that, you know, one of the, the intros to the, to the show, it says that uh, the Oasis, which is like the digital domain that this one guy that created gregarious games, created like this, this digital world, kind of like, uh, um, uh, what, what's that uh, virtual reality thing, uh, you know, The Sims or whatever, and then, uh, you know, so, but in the, in the, in the, in the intro it says, uh, it says, you know, you can do anything, you know, your, that your imagination, you know, that the, the only limit is your imagination. And actually, uh, I think that's what we might start to en enter into, except, except it won't be, see, I think it, that, that's chaotic, where like just, you can just think something into being. I mean, because that means that anybody could, could just, even if it was just localized, like, like somebody sitting there could, change the the reality to anything that they want you know just like you know whatever now I, I do think that we'll have more ability to create and things but there's certain limitations and things you've got to do because because I think the reason why we came from the heaven above you know the heavens where the father is to this reality down the earth is because um, is because this this uh, level of matter, this density, this uh, this this type of reality, even though it's more mundane, it's also more steady. It's more um, reliable. You know, it's not like just anything can happen. Just like this total, you know, chaos. You know, kind of like Satan's named his city Pandemonium, or maybe somebody else named it. Who knows? But um, it's it, you know the, the world of the demons. I think it's a lot more. Um, chaotic because you can't it's, they, they have got to the or the the way the condition of matter is there is that almost anything the the limit of your imagination you can you can make it manifest into reality just like a video game like like the oasis in ready player one but i i believe that even right now in this set reality we can make any um it, it, God can, can, can do anything. You know, nothing is too hard for God. You know, as um, both Abraham and Sarah laughed when he told them that they were going to bear a child because, you know, she was saying, you know, what am I going to do, you know, have sex when I'm old, you know, or whatever. And, but um, what, what they didn't realize was that God turned them both back to their youth so that they could have the child. So they got to, they, they, they got to and the, the scripture doesn't detail that out. You kind of have to read carefully to see that, but it doesn't give any detail about their new lives except that um, Abraham was worried that um, the locals were going to um, take his wife because she was so gorgeous. So he said that it was his sister. Remember that out of the story. So, so that's how you know that she was returned. She was, she was like, you know, a, you know, well stricken with age when she heard the, when she heard God, the three persons of God say to Abraham that he was going to have a child and then she laughed in her tent and then they said hey you laugh and she said no no I didn't but she, but they said no nah, you did because she did she maybe she didn't laugh out loud but she laughed in her heart and of course the Lord knew it but what what they didn't know was that in, is that they, they thought that they were gonna have a child and you know even in their old age but what they didn't know was that God was gonna turn them both back to their youth and that's what God says he'll do for us so I, I think, imagine how awesome that is. I mean, that is like, to me, what, what greater thing is there? What, what, is, what greater thing is there to hope for? And especially when God says that he's going to create a life free of pain, sorrow, and death. And as I've said, he will no longer be wroth with the people. He will no longer flood the earth. And, he, and talking to the daughter of Jerusalem, he says, I will no lo longer um, uh, have uh, anger against you. So that means the, the, the level of perfection that's required for that, it, it'd be a, you have to be perfect of, of body, of soul, of, of, of uh, you know, all, all the character of your being, like uh, Psalm 45 says, the all glorious within. So that way, there, and, and, then, and then also have a perfect, perfectly controlled reality, like a movie 
where everything goes exactly you know the way it's supposed to go but I think there's also it's it's I mean maybe it is like that but I think there's also a random element to it you know it's like anything can happen but within certain parameters so that it doesn't cause sorrow and or, or pain or or crying anymore because God says those are the former things and they will have passed away in time not for um, not until after the thousand years is finished and as far as I know that thousand years hasn't even begun so we don't even know when that next that that thousand year millennial reign of Christ will start but I believe fairly soon it's going to be the return of Christ fairly soon and uh, that's that's but that's coming at a certain point I think either it's before during or after the tribulation there's all kinds of arguments um, about that a lot of people feel that uh, the rapture is only um, is, is before after or during um, who knows it may be both it's it's you know it's really hard to nail it because it's not you know that's if, if it was if it was a sure answer somebody would have it but they don't and there's a lot of debate back and forth but either way um, the heart of a man guides his destiny but the Lord places his footsteps as the scripture says so whatever one's heart is they will be put into the situation that's right for them one thing that's given me a lot of sorrow is the poor relations that I've had with people personally and um, I'm not saying I'm unique you know a lot of people have had a terrible time if not much worse and you know violence and death even involved and just all kinds of crazy stuff but one of the things that just gives me sadness is that I feel like there's a world full of people that we can love and be with and and have great times together and yet in this reality everything but everything goes wrong to where it's, it's like that's why everyone has to have their own little house because no one can get along if people got along people would save a, a ton of money and move in with like three or four families in one big house and save a lot of money and, and also have people to help you with all kinds of stuff your neighbors your friends you know like if it was like a like a hotel basically and everybody just w w would help each other and it would just be awesome but oh god people don't get along it's so terrible I'm looking forward to that Psalm 45 all glorious within and the no more wrath as the father was saying to the daughter of Jerusalem you will no, no longer be wroth with her or punish her but again translating that out to everyone else that that we won't be angry with each other um, we won't um, you know be be doing things against each other because we'll all be approved of God and and perfected inside that all glorious within as well as having bodies that are more comely than the children of men once again there in Psalm 45 so our, our physicality and our spirituality and our knowledge no man need teach his brother for all shall know me from the least unto the greatest so no man need teach his brother in the things of the Lord for all will know the Lord from the least unto the greatest you don't have to worry about teaching them about the things of the Lord because they'll, they'll have an automatic software you know when you buy the product the software is already installed if you're watching this it's not too late say this prayer now Father in heaven, please save my soul by the work of your son Jesus on the cross and show me your pure words in the authorized King James Bible.